crew of five, and I don't ever want to look at any of their spouses and say, I'm sorry, I couldn't get your husband home to you. I was in about my fifth or sixth year, and my closest friend in the department, we had a fire, mutual aid fire, and he went in, and he didn't come out. Failure is life and death. Absolute. That is absolute. Cold black on the grinder. We got blazing down in the prop. You just got scratched. Are you okay, man? Oh my god. You heard that, didn't you? You good at pushing people around, oppressing people. Push me. Push me down these steps. Eliza actually passed away due to heart failure. Um, she was only able to enjoy her dream home for about three years before that happened. The family should show me. Yeah. That was right behind me. I heard it. Holy f dude. Hello? Um, the nursing home patients were not always sure that they are cognizant that they've passed away. Okay. Um, they tend to be a little bit more anxious. What happened? I, just, I turned around here and I thought I saw kind of like a little white mist right here in the corner of this cabinet. We don't know exactly how many people would have passed here because we don't have that record available to us, but there were probably quite a number of them that passed here. What was that? What the f***? Make that door. Go, look. See if it's moving. I can't see. I can't see. This building, this house, the Anchorage, has a lot of history to it. When was this house built? It was built in 1859. What's the story behind the construction? I heard that there's a really interesting story behind why it was built, the little bit of the luck of this house. Well, Douglas Putnam was a very rich man here in Marietta, and he actually built this home for his wife, Eliza. Um, she went to New England to visit one of her friends and saw the beautiful Italian at homes that were there, and obviously she couldn't be outdone. So she came here, asked her husband to build her her dream home, and he did. Um, and it was completed in 1859. It was built by a man named John Slocum. What are some of the um, reports here? Well, we have a myriad of entities that linger in the anchorage. Um, the parlor is a hot spot for Eliza Putnam. She is the really the lady that made the anchorage become a real idea. And we believe that she still lingers here because she died three years um, after the house was built, so she didn't get to enjoy it for very long. Her mindset was that she was going to be the premier hostess in Marietta, and she had all these parties planned, and you know, all of these things, and she never actually got to make that happen because she, had, she passed away. So she is seen in the parlor, she's seen at the top of the staircase, and also in the tower. Douglas did remarry, and his new wife then got to take over all of the things that Eliza had hoped would happen to her. 
And we don't think that his new wife really appreciated the house too much because after Douglas died in 1894, she sold it within six months for a loss. We do believe Douglas might still be here. Uh, we also believe that we've come into contact with him quite often. Um, doing an investigation here with uh, the owner of Hidden Marietta, Jessica, and we actually believe that we got in contact with him, but he doesn't believe that he is passed, he's passed on. Some of the other entities that we regularly interact with would be Henrietta. She's a little girl. Still haven't quite figured out what her background is, uh, but we believe that she is related to the second family, the Knox family. She is seen as a little girl with blonde hair, and she is quite interactive. She likes to play with um, any type of gadgets that have lights <laughs> or noise. She loves to play with those kind of things. Could you tell me a little bit more about the Knox family who used to live here? Um, they were a family of boat builders, and that's how they made their money. They had a shipyard down here on the river, and when they lived here, they renovated the driveway into the shape of an anchor, which is what changed the name of this building from Putnam Villa to the Anchorage. Okay. Well, the house actually went from owner to owner for a while. Um, one of the owners that we do believe is also still here, his name is Eddie Taggart. He owned the home in, in the 1930s, and he was actually a really big lover of music. Um, he funded the music program at Marietta College, and he actually would hire local musicians to come to his house and perform, and he would let the townspeople from below come up and enjoy the music as well. And so it became a nursing home around 1965 or so? 1963, so yeah, just about that time. Okay. And it operated as a nursing home for 23 years, closing their doors in 1986. So there would have been, probably safe to say, quite a bit of um, elderly people who had came through here. This was their home, and for some of them, perhaps uh, their final home. Yes, it's very likely. We don't know exactly how many people would have passed here because we don't have that record available to us but there were probably quite a number of them that passed here. So nursing homes, that's a lot, of, a lot of end of life situations. A lot of people go to nursing homes to live out their final years. Do you think that may have had some sort of an impact on this, on this structure, having those people living out their final years and possibly dying here? Yes, uh, we actually have had quite a few people see shadows shuffling through the hallways. Um, we have a few members on our group that are actually sensitive and they have seen patients and orderlies and stuff walking through the hallways upstairs. Um, we've also caught an EVP of a gentleman asking, can I help you? Which we believe maybe might have been one of the orderlies asking us if we needed any assistance from him. We also, um, unfortunately, do run into entities from the nursing home itself. Uh, we have a couple of board members that are hesitant to come into the house, um, board members from the Washington County Historical Society. They don't like to come in here uh, because when they did, they felt overwhelmed by sadness. It was almost like something had, um, like they walked into a wall of sadness and they couldn't shake that feeling until they went home and actually took a shower and it finally kind of receded. Um, so they are definitely hesitant to come back, but um, the nursing home patients were not always sure that they are cognizant that they've passed away. Okay. Um, they tend to be a little bit more anxious. So what were the conditions like when this was a nursing home? Well, we've spoken to a lot of the nursing staff that used to actually work here. Um, quite a few of them have actually gone on tours with us and done private investigations and public investigations with us. Um, a lot of them say that they had quite a few patients here that were actually pretty happy to be here. Um, and some of them that weren't so happy. Uh, I do believe one of the nurses actually told me that I think the capacity for the building was supposed to be about 30 patients and it was like upwards of 75 or so. Um, so I wouldn't imagine that if they had that many patients in the bedrooms and in the hallways that there would have been very comfortable for them. We do have a male shadow figure that's been seen. He first was seen in the attic, at least by our team, and uh, some other investigators have caught him both in the music room and also in the servants' quarters. He tends to linger most often these days in the servants' quarters, but he's not always friendly. <laughs> he's somewhat grumpy, um, and we also have had him um, reach out and, and touch people, especially female investigators. So we know that the uh, parlor and the, uh, the bell tower 
is uh, particularly active areas, especially for Eliza. My only experience with her was when I was a child and didn't know it, that I was seeing somebody up in the, the tower because we would drive by every day and I would see somebody standing there and my parents tried to convince me that it was a mannequin. So when we started running these tours, I asked them if they had ever housed mannequins up there and they were very insistent that they did not. So I now know through research and working here that it was Eliza and it did look like somebody who was just leaning there watching the town, how, how it had changed since her time here. Do you think, in, in your opinion, do you think the Anchorage is haunted? Yes, undoubtedly so. Um, this place has quite a lot of energy, a lot of energy trapped within the walls, um, a quite, a, quite a lot of history to the building as well, um, and I genuinely think that that's just enough to give it that energy to keep spirits continuing on. Um, whether they be residual or intelligent, I think there's definitely still something here. So it's been about seven years since we investigated the Anchorage Mansion as Paranormal Quest for the first time. And I think I remember whenever we first got here, uh, at that time we were so impressed with the architecture. We were really impressed with the facade of the building and just the beautiful, uh, what would have once been this ornate woodwork, the beautiful design. But I think, I think we were really surprised by the activity that took place. Are you sure you didn't touch me on the head? I thought you tapped me. No, 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 I was looking at him and talking. God, that was crazy. I don't think like you were going to stab me or something. No, you know. I didn't believe it. That that was, happen. That'll happen a lot up in the attic. It's probably one of the most firm touches that I've had, especially on the head. You know, I've had it on the arm, grabbed it on the arm, and touched it on the hand, but that was a pressure right against my head. Absolutely. I think one of the uh, EVPs uh, that I can recall uh, was captured by accident. It was. I remember it was very, very hot, just like it is now, um, when we, uh, we were here seven years ago. And I think Dave had left his recorder downstairs in the foyer um, by accident on like a register or something. And then after going back through the footage, we actually found that there was a recording of what sounded like um, something being pushed along the floor that had like a metallic like clang to it. To me, it almost reminded me of what it sounded like plates or trays on like a metal tray on a metal cart, it did. like when you're being it really pushed. Did. And it stopped like right next to the recorder, pretty much. It was very, it was very awesome. It was. So yeah, and the same thing, you know, we had what sounded like remember the chair. Mm -hmm. It sounded like the chair scooted across the floor. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. It sounded like the chair was pulled across the floor and we didn't have any explanation for that. There was nobody in the house. It was, no. uh, it was Latin and I remember showing that to Tom Moore and he was, he was pretty excited about that. And this house really does have a lot of activity and I think it sneaks up on you. Yeah. I remember when we pulled up, I recall just feeling just like a magnetism to, uh, to the house itself. Like it was very, I mean it was mysterious, it was, something was kind of creepy but it felt at the same time very welcoming to it. And that might be Eliza. You know, yeah. she always wanted to have guests over, have lavish parties, different things like that. And unfortunately as we've learned, she never really got to do that. She only lived like what, almost like three years after the house was finished. And uh, she never really got to live that out. But maybe she is living that out. Maybe maybe Eliza's living out that dream that she had of this home, this beautiful home that she wanted her husband to build that she wanted Douglas to build for her. And now we have Jason. We do. Bring, bringing Jason in here for the first time. And uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, I mean, like like old times, like the anchor when we first were here, but on steroids, because we have Jason here to help. We have yeah. more equipment. We have be more experience investigating. Yeah. I mean, what do you anticipate tonight, Jason? I mean, what do you, what, what do you think is gonna happen? Hopefully a lot of things. Hopefully a lot of things, you know. Uh, 
It's definitely a beautiful building. I was anxious to see it and come up here with you guys to see it myself. You know, I've heard stories y'all told me and I've overheard from things you know you had happen here on your first visit. Uh, quite a bit of history here, so it's definitely got potential. So we'll see. I mean, hopefully you have the fingers, toes, and eyes crossed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think one of the good things about this investigation is is that uh, you know you never know what's going to happen here at the Anchorage, and I think now with the sun, I think. I mean, if you look outside, you guys, the sun's going down, so... It's about that time. It is. <laughs> I think it's time to see what the anchorage says to us. Let's see what we can... see what we can get. This is on and recording. Make sure we see how much of a difference that makes on the... Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. This K2 is on and this recorder is on. I think Jason is going to change batteries and hit it. interviews and whatnot, and uh, Jason, myself, and Dave are heading up to uh, the upper floors at the Anchorage. That's right. Kick this night off. On we plow. <laughs> it is a little bit warm. It's always hot when we come here to the Anchorage. Where do you gentlemen want to start? You start with the Up here? Yeah, I got some interesting feeling when I went in there a little bit ago. You all right? Yeah, it's like you just, I just walked right into it. Feel that? Like an energy. Did you feel how cold it is right here? It just got cold a little bit. I don't feel that, but I feel all the hair on my body standing up. You guys come with me put that in here? Yeah, I'm coming in. Going in there? I think. Could have been. 
If there's someone watching over uh, the crib, maybe there's a child in the crib, can you go close to the crib and maybe rock the crib or touch the red glowing light inside the crib? You all right there, Jason? Yeah. Try to kind of tune into everything. To me, it feels like kind of solemn in here. Like yeah. You can feel the history. We have a couple of board members that are hesitant to come into the house. They don't like to come in here uh, because when they did, they felt overwhelmed by sadness. Are you in here with us? Eliza, are you here with us tonight? If so, can you maybe make make a knocking sound for us? That door move there. Share them. Share them. Share them. You alright? I thought I heard that door move there. Alright, so I just finished dumping this footage and uh, it took me a while to find the right file. We had a little bit of a mix up on the file formats here, so it took me a little bit. The guy started without me, but I'm gonna jump in to the game here now myself. I'm gonna go up and try and see if I can find him. So, here we go. What's that? It's Sorry, that was me. I found the file, so I'm on my way up. Okay, there it is. Sorry. Where are you? Right ahead. Okay, who was there? There's a mirror over here, so I thought you were standing over here. Yeah. <laughs> The ones over there to your right? Yeah. <laughs> Does you remember the, uh, one of the IR lights is on the, uh, step ladder. Okay. Is there anybody in here with us? Eliza, are you up here? <coughs> Steve's setting up the REM pod over there.
in that room over there. Yeah. Eliza, did you die before you ever got a chance to live in this house? You got a point one on the mail? Yeah. Are you trying to respond to him, Eliza? Trying to respond to the question using that thing in Steve's hand? You can do that. It is very warm up here. Yeah. Not as warm as it was earlier today, but it's pretty warm. That's for sure. Eliza, Henrietta, can you shut a door for us or say something so that we can hear your voice? Can you touch that device for us? What was that? What'd you hear? I heard somebody go, hmm. What was that? That was odd. Would be like between you and I, like in here, maybe. Somewhere over that way. stairs right here, how the servants would access where they lived. Anyone who is here with us, my name is Jason, this is my friend Dave. I mean you no disrespect. Spider webs, right here. Hold on, hold that for a second. Right here, is there is there any spider webs? Reach up. I don't see anything moving. I got like static energy all over my arms right now. Okay. Is there something in my hair? They're all dissolved. Like I feel like. It's, um, it felt it's like. like I don't like it felt like first it felt like I walked through spider webs right here. Okay. And 
you know, right here, it felt like as I was walking, I felt like I walked directly through a big spider web that was in the middle of the hallway, which wouldn't make sense because Steve walked through first. He didn't feel anything. And he didn't feel anything. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, as soon as I started feeling that on my arms, I felt just a touch on the back of my head. Which is why I thought there was something in my hair. That was creepy. Let us know somehow that you're here with us. But it's weird because I was just going to say something to feel like we walk into this room or the next room. It's like we're walking into obviously a bedroom, you know, like some right. relaxing, some private space. Yeah, someone's private space that does not want to be interrupted. Unfortunately, that, that happens while investigating. So, with that, we have the, the family of Did you hear that? It's like a woman's voice? Yeah. That was like right behind me. I heard it. Holy <laughs> dude. Hello? Hey, let me get the door away here. That way we just kind of give them their space a little bit. Yeah, I got... Let you look in this way. I can feel it in my knees, the energy, man. With that, even if we have that... Even if we have that... Even if we have that... The family of Like a woman's voice? Yeah. That was that, that was, was right behind me. That, that was, was awesome. Clear as hell. We heard you. I think you said hey. And it's what it sounded like to me. This device in my hand won't hurt you. You've probably seen them by now. Can you come close to this device? It might be able to let us know that you're close to us. Can you speak again for us? Are you upset that we're walking into your living space? If you would like for us to close the door, um, can you make another knocking sound in there or let us hear your voice? Just feels energized in the servants' quarters. Yeah. As weird as that is to say. A lot of hard, hard work went into cooking, cleaning. I hate to. I mean, I'm not trying to be like weird or anything, or like a drama queen, but man, I'm, I'm feeling. It feels like there's someone behind me. We probably have people following. Yeah. And I can feel it, you know, like when you get... Have you ever gotten, like, felt energy to where you can feel it? Like, you feel weak in the knees? Yeah. That was me. 
That's what I was feeling. That's what I'm feeling. I feel like as soon as we stepped into the servants' quarters here, it just felt. If you if you really think back, we didn't really get to do this that much last time. No, we didn't. But as soon as we stepped in here, it was like the energy hit me, and I've I've been I've been almost affected by it ever since we walked in here. And that then that woman's voice only confirms. Yeah, that woman's voice really really hit me. So with that, we have that. The finish of Sean. Did you hear that? It's like a woman's voice? Yeah. That, I don't know, her just, her, her voice, right, instantly was just like lonely. Yeah. Like she's obviously stuck here and. I don't know. It was. It I was weird. That, but I think that for that one so that one time is all the energy she had. Energy she had. Yeah. That one by one, like, hey, you know, that's kind of was pretty much what I heard. Just that one call, call for attention. Yeah. We don't want you to be startled or afraid. Come on out and show us your house. Bad? We got a bat in here. <laughs> I just happened to see it's working. Yeah, there he goes. He's flying right by us. Look at him. There he goes. Here he comes back. Anyway. He came out of nowhere. Second floor, we we'll headed back to the servants' quarters to try to make contact with uh, who we. What just happened? I can't hear him. Oh, you didn't hear him? No, I, all I can hear is these fans that they have on here. Oh, I Wait, shh. Hello? Dude, did that door just push open? What was that? What was that? What was that? I'm gonna try and replicate this here. As best I can. No, this doesn't even move, man. Uh-oh. What if it was this one? So I think it was this one here. Cause it was far back behind me, dude. What did I think it was this one? No, that wasn't it. It was too. Something. Something slammed, man. Something slammed up here, and I don't know what it is. That was loud, dude. That was pretty awesome. So let's go back this way. Look. Maybe it's farther down this way. Jump out of my skin. Look at my heart stop. Hello? Oh, I got a weird feeling. Who's up here? I'm trying to draw us away from the servants' quarters. All right. Try to 
Let's see. Going down this way. We're moving out of your space. We're sorry. Just sitting here. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to call out some names here. And if you're here, back in the far room, there's a little uh, object with a red glowing light on top of it. And a couple other little uh, gadgets, little items. If you would, stand over top of them or touch the device, get close to them, and we'll know that you're here with us. So I'm going to call the names. Rose Turner. We're curious to who tried to talk to us last time we were up here. So, with that, we have the, the feeling of Did you hear that? It's like a woman's voice? Yeah. Was it you, Rose Turner? If so, please touch the device like I did. I don't know what it is, but I feel like something, whatever... Whatever's up here seems to be staying over here behind me because on my right arm, I have the worst goosebumps, even though it's extremely hot and I'm sweating. Yeah. I have chills. Next, if it was you and Dornan who tried to talk with us, can you touch the device there in the middle of the floor? Just, just it's just a way we know that you're here. How about Nancy Hill? Are you here with us tonight, Nancy? Margaret Turner. Was it you that spoke to us? If so, please touch the device in the middle of the floor there with the red glowing light. Rose Smith. Was it you that tried to talk to us? We only have one more name. And there, there's probably a lot more, but Jessica only found these names thus far. Again, speaking to whoever it was that tried to talk to Ryan and I earlier, if you're here, please close or touch the device in the middle of the floor if your name is Eunice Boise. Eunice Boise. If you're here with us, Please put it, touch the device in the middle of the floor. Maybe the REM pod and K2s need some space here. Lift the uh, list the names right here by the glowing little candle. So we're gonna have to continue on without him. He's asleep in the in the parlor down on the first floor. We're gonna go up to the attic. This is where Henrietta is believed to be seen and heard from, and also Eliza up in the tower, which they also call the widow's walk. So, but hopefully we can get communication with them, and yeah, we're gonna do a little PSB 11 spirit box session when we get up here. Henrietta, we came up here to play with you. 
Do you want to play? We can play hide and knock. See if we can find you. We'll count to 10 and then we'll ask for a knock and then we'll try and come find you from where you're knocking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give us a knock. Where are you? Are you over there at the other side of the attic? Keep thinking I'm seeing you over there. Did you hear that? Yeah. My name is Jason. This is my friend Stephen Ryan. Hi, Henrietta. We just want to come talk to you. You don't want to get close. I have a little ball here. I'll just roll it over your way. You want to roll it back to us? Henrietta, if uh, or, or should I ask you, are you uh, good friends with uh, Eliza Putnam? Just sit down here, my back is killing me. If you're up here, I'm going to turn on a, a radio. Don't let it scare you, it won't hurt you or anything, but it's going to be kind of loud. So just don't let it startle you. Turn this radio on. And it'll actually help us to hear you if you want to speak to it. You don't need to be afraid of it. I say it's a little bit loud, but if you speak louder than this, well, we can maybe hear you. Hey. You ready? Yeah. Who? Is something? I don't know. Eliza, are you here? Yes or no? Is any of the Knox family here? The shipbuilders, are you here? Knox? I'm gonna go up into your tower. Let's have a look. 
Parks in the old city of Mariana. Eliza? Are you up here? Can anyone go over there to that chair that has the little jewelry box with the ballerina and uh, touch the device that has a red glowing light on top of it? There's a silver stick on top. Can you touch that? Please. I only have like 15 minutes of battery left on this camera anyway. Okay, so the parlor here is actually where uh, what we've been told over the years they might have done some funerals in here because back in those days you didn't have funeral homes when you passed away, especially in the days of like Douglas Putnam, this might have been where Eliza's funeral took place. Um, they just perform these funerals in the parlor, so that might be one reason why a lot of, a lot of the time they will uh, maybe be active in this area. This was one of their, the rooms where they had the final celebration of their life, so let's see what we can, see what we can muster up out of this. Mrs. Putnam, if your funeral service was here, as Ryan said, your last celebration of life as you crossed over to the other side of the veil, could you uh, come close to us here, close to the table, and maybe reach out and touch one of the items? We know that you're here with us. So Eliza, what do you think? What did you first think of this beautiful home when Douglas had finally finished it for you? Well, for what it for what it's worth, we think you have a beautiful home, Eliza, and uh, we feel that it's a shame that you didn't get to enjoy it that long, that much, when, when you were alive. And we hope and pray that you're getting to enjoy it, you know, in the hereafter. There's a lot of people who really care about your house, your home and want to see it survive. If you're aware of that, if you're happy, I should say, can you uh, say, can you say so close to the reporter here, the table, with an orange light on it, or come close to the other devices here? Mr. Putnam, are you here? If so, can you make a tapping sound over there on the fireplace mantle? Or a 
if there's anybody that remains from when this was a nursing home. If there's anybody still here from the Christian Anchorage nursing home. Please come and talk to us. We're not going to hurt you. We want to be your friend. kind of strange and surreal because it seems almost like this is a place that you can call home, you know. Despite all the creepy stuff that happened earlier in the attic, it seems like this part of the house is entirely different than the upstairs. It was something. What was that? Okay. So, with that, we have the, the feeling of Did you hear that? It's like a woman's voice? Yeah. Seems like the former residents of the house, whether it be the Putnams or the Knox family, or even those that were, you know, tragic, tragically passed away in the nursing home. It doesn't seem like they're angry or they're upset. It just seems like they're existing. And I think Eliza really welcomes them. She obviously likes a lot of people. Mm -hmm. She probably does what she can to make them feel comfortable. Probably. Thank you everybody for talking to us. Thank you for, if you did make your presence known, if you didn't talk tonight. Thank you. Hey guys, we wanted to hop on real quick and tell you that you can now get PQ merch like this. If you go to teespring.com forward slash PQ merch, you can pick you up one of these t-shirts. You can get a hoodie. You can get sweatpants, workout clothes, you can get a pillow, a blanket, a mug, anything you want to get within that realm of merchandise. You can get it at teespring.com forward slash PQ merch.